Vrel looked out across what once was the capital of his people's empire, an empire that had once spanned a hundred systems over countless worlds. So many had been placed under their rule, and so many had learned of their greatness. But now it was not but a broken ruin, piles of rubble laid to waste by a race that hadn't even been the tiniest of blips on the scale of the empire's reckoning, a world so small and insignificant that it didn't even need a legion to conquer initially. How far they had come since the first conquest. It didn't take long for them to be integrated into the empire's structure. Some as slaves working the many resource worlds, their hardy nature from them being a part of a death world enabling them to survive in a wide range of climates. Others worked as diplomats, their unique vocal cords and mouths allowing them to speak many languages as fluently as a native speaker. Something that had long been thought impossible without cybernetic augmentation. Even now, it seemed almost like a bad joke that the humans had one. He still remembered when the first report of a human uprising crossed his desk. He laughed. He had actually laughed at these little things standing up to them. Oh, how foolish the elite had been. Vrel still pondered if only they had taken a moment to study the race's history. If for even one moment, they would have seen how soaked with blood humanity's history truly was. Wars amongst many of the races under the Empire's sway were quick things, done between a single harvest season. But these humans did not rest. They were a race truly mired in an ocean of their own blood. The most terrifying thing was they knew they were good at it. Sir? Vrel blinked as he looked down at his assistant. The poor Cluxus had clearly been trying to get his attention for a while. Vrel bowed his head slightly as he looked at his aide. Apologies, this one was lost in thought. I can't help but feel this could have been avoided, he explained, gesturing to the ruins. Maybe, sir, his aide said with a slightly mirthful smirk. Vrel chose not to reprimand him for the disrespect. The Cluxus had long since been a part of the Empire's workings. It was easy to forget there was a time when all were not subordinate to Vrel's people. But the humans fought in rather unique ways. Vrel could only nod. Indeed. It was the truth. Humankind had lacked the power to oppose them at first. So as the humans put it, they rolled over. They let themselves be integrated, not out of loyalty or fear, but due to cunning. Many a primitive race had been conquered, but humanity was the first to use their conquest as a means to grow stronger. As with their willful integration, they were gifted with technology. They could traverse the borders of the empire more freely. They gained weapons to deal with the pirate brigands. If only those gifting could have recognized the predators were sharpening their fangs and claws, waiting to strike. They were like brigands at first, Vrel commented. Indeed, sir. Many hit-and-run tactics. Well-coordinated tactics, Vrel corrected. The humans had learnt and studied the technology. Vrel's people had put it to enthusiasm to serve or a desire to aid the empire by lowering maintenance costs. Little did they know they were looking for weaknesses. It had started with fringe forces, though. A short raid here, a quick attack there. Nothing too major to be anything but rogue elements. But humanity used its skills well. While working as diplomats and translators, it began poisoning the system from within. A mistranslated word here, or there can mean the difference between a world joining a fight or not. The war, though, truly began when all humanity rose up. Along with countless allies, they had turned against the empire. What had at first been thought to be a simple rogue group became a massive civil war. A war led by humanity and its countless centuries of spilling blood. You know, my children used to have nightmares about the humans' arrival, Vrel commented. They were terrified of the great humans coming to gobble them up. I assure you we would never do that, a new voice declared as he approached the pair. Ah, Captain Luke. Yes, Sir Vrel. The human nodded with a smile. How goes the rebuilding? Vrel asked, looking behind him at the parts of the capital the humans were helping rebuild. Well, and on schedule. Some of the other races are grumbling. But we made it clear this is our way. Destruction and construction? The Cluxus asked. You could say that. It could be that if we ease the suffering of war, an enemy today could be an ally tomorrow. Personally, I think it's rather simple. How so? Vrel asked. You have had a chance to read about our history and culture. Have you come across the fable of the frog and the scorpion? I know of the creatures, but not the tale. Simple enough story. 
There's a frog hopping along the shore of a great big river. When he meets a scorpion, the scorpion asks the frog to carry him across. Frog rightly asks, what if you sting me? The scorpion points out they would both drown if he did. Vrel nodded to this. Yes, a foolish concern. Luke nodded. So the frog lets the scorpion climb on his back and begins to swim across. But halfway across, he feels a sharp pain in his back, then another, and another. The scorpion had stung him. Why? Vrel asked. That's exactly what the frog asked, and it is the crux of why we destroy and rebuild. Why are we so good at violence and peace? Because the scorpion said to the frog, because it is in my nature. Put simply Vrel, we cannot help who we are. Maybe I can have hope for this new era. Humanity guides things and all. I understand my children have even played with some human children, Vrel said with a color of melancholy as he looked back to the ruined half of the city.